Hi everyone, welcome to our channel Come With Us. We are in the Crimean Peninsula. We are not far from Sevastopol. Sevastopol is one of the most important cities in Crimea, but we are not there today. We are in Bakhchisarai. Bakhchisarai is a town not far from Sevastopol, only 100 kilometers away from it. Well, if you don't know, the Crimean Peninsula is located in the Black Sea. And what is Bakhchisarai? Bakhchisarai is a town. It was very big and important many, many years ago, but now it's not. Although this place is unique in some ways and has got a very interesting history. Once upon a time, Bakhchisarai was the capital of the Crimean Khanate. Crimean Khanate was a state in uh, the Crimean Peninsula from the 14th to the 18th century. This state wasn't actually independent. It soon became a vassal of the Ottoman Empire. And we are heading to the Khan's palace. The only piece of palace architecture remained from the uh, Crimean Khanate time. There are many souvenir shops around where you can buy oriental things, including prayer mats, as you can see, and, I don't know how to say that, uh, special kettles to make coffee. But my husband and I are not buying anything today, because our backpacks are already full, they are very heavy, and our plane is in a few hours, we should go to Simferopol first, and we can't have more than 10 kilograms per person in our hand luggage. Unfortunately, there are not only souvenir shops here, but also lots of cafes. Try local cuisine, it's very delicious. We recommend you to start with lagman. Lagman is a kind of soup made with pasta, vegetables and meat, much meat. Another tasty thing is yantik. Yantik is a kind of a flat pie filled with meat. As you know, Muslims, they don't eat pork, and it's very hard to find pork here in this place. But all uh, local cuisine is made with lamb or beef or chicken. As for desserts, you definitely must try pahlava. Pahlava is a cake made of dough, walnuts and honey. Very delicious. Try it with coffee. Let's go back to the history of the place. In the end of the 18th century, the Crimean Khanate became a part of the Russian Empire. It happened during the reign of Catherine the Great. Muscovite state had been trying to conquest the Black Sea shore for a very long time, all 18th century, and finally they succeed. The country was not a Muscovite state that time already, it was the empire, and Catherine the Great took a trip from the capital, St. Petersburg, to Crimea. Special monuments were installed as she moved. They were installed every 10 miles of her way, in honor of the Empress. These monuments were called Miles of Catherine the Great. Not all of them remained, unfortunately, only three, and one of, the, of them is in front of the Khan Palace. You may see it here now. The Empress had been staying in the Khan Palace for two days. She used it as a hotel, actually, on her way to Sevastopol. Here we are, in front of the Khan Palace. There were no Khans in the palace when Catherine the Great uh, stayed there. The last Khan of, uh, Khan of uh, the Crimean Khanate gave up his power in favor of the Empress. The ex-Khan was offered a lifetime annual payment by the Russian government, but he preferred to escape to the Ottoman Empire. Not a very wise thing to do, because he was soon executed there. This is the big Khan's mosque. You can see one of the minarets. The whole compound of buildings here are being restored at the moment, because uh, they are mostly made of wood and it's very difficult to save them. 
All the buildings that you can see in front of you now date back to 1740s. We know it for sure, because in 1736 Russian army took Bakhchisarai and Field Marshal Minich ordered to burn this palace to ashes. But uh, the Russian Empire it did not retain power in the Crimea at that time, and uh, soon uh, Crimean Tatars rebuilt the palace again. Since 1780s, the palace was given to the Ministry of Eternal Affairs of the Russian Empire, and it was used for different purposes. There were few attempts to re rebuild, to redecorate the palace, but not all of them were careful. Uh, not always people tried to save uh, its original form, unfortunately. This special construction was built a few years ago to protect the main part of the palace from the rainfall and winds. The name Bakhchisarai can be translated as Garden Palace and it's really worth trying to save its beauty. The economy of Crimean Khanate was consisted of grain and fabric production and trading, but one of the parts of their budget was slave trading as well. They sold slaves mostly to Constantinople, the capital of the Ottoman Empire, but where actually did they get slaves? Crimean Tatars were nomads, and it was in their blood to fight. So they attacked neighboring countries, Poland, Ukraine, southern part of Russia, and they took prisoners there. The most popular slaves, if it's possible to say so, people that were profitable to sell, were teenagers and young women. Crimean Khanate could sell about 17,000 people every year, so these countries, southern Ukraine, Russia and Poland, lost millions of their people during the attacks, because these attacks, uh, attacks they lasted for centuries. But the slave trading was over after the Russian-Turkish War, a war with the Ottoman Empire in 1780s. And it was not only the question of access to the Black Sea for the Russian Empire, the conquest of the Crimea, but also the issue of border security. Probably that's why Catherine the Great took her journey here to Crimea, 
the traveling was not very comfortable that time. She left St. Petersburg in January and she was in Bakhchisarai only in May. Just imagine that. By the way, the journey was provided at great expense. It can be compared with half of the year budget of Russian Empire. Wow! The Empress used to call Crimea a pearl in her crown. Look at the palace square we are walking around now. Centuries ago it was not as beautiful as it is. There were no plants, no trees, no flowers. Troops were gathering here before the military campaigns and sometimes military exercises were conducted. Women from the Khan's harem could observe all these things from the Falcon Tower. We will show you the Falcon Tower later. We are walking by Khan's retinue building. Khan's retinue and guards were living here. And now these buildings are for management of the museum. This palace can be also named the Palace of Fountains. There are many fountains here and it's really difficult to count how many. They are very unusual, not very powerful, but uh, we think that most of them were used for ablutions. Look. Muslims pray six times a day and they must wash their faces and hands before they pray. That, we, that is called ablutions and mm, these fountains can be used for these purposes. Although some of them are just romantic and beautiful. We are still on the male part of the palace. Uh, women could not go here. Uh, there were strict rules in the palace. And the women part of the palace was called harem. Women lived only there and special servants looked after them. The word harem could be translated as sacred, the one whose borders can't be pulled down. So it's a place where the beautiful half of humanity, I mean women, lived. It is considered that Khan's harem must be filled with wives and concubines and lots of women, but speaking about uh, Khan's harem, this harem, it's not really so. There were no concubines here and usually Khan had only one or maybe two wives. But the territory of the harem is very big. Not all of the buildings remained unfortunately, only one or two, but it was much larger in the previous times. Who lived in harems? Not only a wife and her daughters, but also aunts, unmarried sisters of the Khan, and uh, of course mother and grannies and lots of servants. Boys can be can lived in harem too, but under the age of seven. After they turned seven, they go to study and they can't go back to harem anymore. Blithely expecting can around playful fountain. On silk carpets, on net, high-spirited crowd sat, and with children's joy looked, like a fish in the clear depth, a went on a marble floor. On purpose to eat at the bottom of the other, dropped gold earrings. Around slave meanwhile, sherbet were fragrant, and the songs and pleasant sonorous suddenly announced the entire harem. That is a liberal translation of the poem, part of it. Uh, it is called uh, Fountain of Bakhchisarai. It was written by one of the Russian poets and writers, Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin. The name of the poem, the Fountain of Bakhchisarai, one of the most important fountains in this palace, it is called Fountain of Tears. Pushkin visited this palace in 1820s, so almost 30 years after the uh, war with the Ottoman Empire, and he mentioned this in uh, his diary. I had heard before about the strange monument of the Khan in love. It was poetically described to me, called as a fountain of tears. When I entered the palace, I saw a ruined fountain. Water was falling drop by drop from a rusty, a rusty iron tube. 
I walked around the palace with great annoyance at the neglect in which it is decaying, decaying and at the same European alterations of the sun rooms. Uh, I was almost forcibly led to the stairs to the ruins of the harem and to the Khan's cemetery. Thanks God, now the palace is not in ruins, it is beautifully redecorated. Uh, for example, the council hall we were going through. Now we are in the swimming pool yard and we are heading to summer house. This summer house is a special room for relax. Look at the paintings, they are original here. They were opened during the large-scale restoration in 1962, in the Soviet Union times. Water was and still is like treasure in Crimea, and the amounts of fountains in the palace uh, had to confirm the power and viability of the Khan. By the way, the place for the capital, Bakhchisarai, was not chosen by accident. It is a very comfortable place for living. For example, it is situated in the valley, surrounded with mountains. And mountains, they protect uh, the valley from cold winter winds. And the most important thing, there are lots of springs in this valley, so there is lots of water. Look around, it is really difficult to save the wooden building. We can see it from the inside, there are lots of props and posts uh, that help uh, this building not to crash. That's why the amount of tourists inside is uh, strictly limited and it's not an easy matter to get inside, we must wait in a queue. But let's go back to the Fountain of Tears. Khan Karim Girey ordered to build this fountain is seven, in 1764 in honor of his wife Dilara. Her name was Dilara and she is highly respected and loved here, still. According to the legend, he, she was poisoned by a rival and the drops from the fountain uh, represent uh, the Khan's sadness. Pushkin has changed the plot of the legend. According to him, there is a rivalry between Khan's wife, Zarema, and a captive girl, Maria. Maria was a, girl, was a daughter of Polish aristocrat, and she was not supposed, supposed to be in harem at all. There is another fountain here, the Golden Fountain. It's still not the Fountain of Tears. As you can see, there are not many people around it and uh, there are two quotations on it and one of them is the quotation from the Quran and the Lord gave them a pure drink it's about the saint people in heaven now we are truly heading to the fountain of tears and I'm still reading Pushkin's poem Zarema is asking Maria to help her not to leave her without her beloved husband he called me and from the non we are in constant ecstasy breathed happiness. Before it was, alas, Giray betrayal breathing, not listening to my pangs. He does not find it with me anymore. You are not involved in crime, I know, not your fault. So listen, I'm fine. In the harem you I alone could also use to be dangerous. But I was born for passion, and you cannot love like me. Leave me, Giray, he is mine. It was the Fountain of Tears, with a bust of Pushkin next to it. I don't think Pushkin exaggerated the intention of passions that could be found in harems, because the beloved wife of uh, the Khan was poisoned by a rivalry. It was uh, a real story. We are following tourists' currents, uh, sometimes listening to the guide, sometimes not, but lots of buildings are still closed for watching. And what's this? The, it looks like a mulberry bush, but it's very strange. It is in bloom, but it's not the right season for, for it. It's autumn. What is this? 
there is a falcon tower to the left it is being restored in the mom at the moment unfortunately we cannot get in its name is from uh, birds falcons that lived on the ground floor these birds were used for falconry so they helped khans to entertain there are actually two mosques on the territory you can tell mosques from other buildings by minarets this one is a small khan's mosque the territory of the palace used to be quite bigger uh, more than 18 hectares but now there are only four hectares of it there are lots of uh, there were lots of gardens and different territories for women uh, the territory of harim was bigger um, many years ago there were bath houses and swimming pools and gardens lots of beautiful things finally forsaking north Feasts long forgetting, I visited Bechchisarai in oblivion dormant palace. Among the silent transitions I wandered there, where after the horrors of the raid, the luxury's laziness droning, yet still breathless bliss. The empty chambers and gardens, water game, red roses and twisted vines and gold shine on the walls. I saw crumbling lattice for where with in its spring amber examining rosary, sighed his wife in silence. I saw the Khan's cemetery, Lord's last home, these grave posts wedding marble turban. Where they disappeared, Khan's, where is Harim? Around all is quiet, everything's dull, everything has changed. It's a pity there are no rhymes in the translation. We don't know for sure what was the life like in harems, because uh, there were very few people invited in. But they say that it was like an institution for noble maidens. Uh, young women were taught here not only mathematics and reading, but also law and uh, dancing and music and the interpretation of the Quran. Interpretation of the Quran. Very difficult to pronounce. And sometimes women even could listen the counts in the whole uh, discussions there was a special hidden room above the main door in the council hall and some educated well-educated wives they even exchanged letters with foreign politicians this way they supported the political course of their husband Some of the oldest and the noblest uh, women of Harim were given the title of Hanshi Valide, and these women were very important even in politics. Their voice, their opinion was almost as important as Khan's voice, well, after him. To the south of the Falcon Tower there was a Persian yard. It was quite large and was surrounded by a very high a very high wall. And there were lots of gardens and fountains and uh, bathhouses and summer houses there. It was the women part women's part of the harem, of course. No timid wife, Gere, or think, or do not want to dare, bloom in dull silence, custody vigilant, and in the lap of boredom, cheerless, they, do know, they don't know adultery. In the shadow of the prison their beauty is hidden. So Arabian flowers living behind the glass of greenhouse. For them the dull succession days of the month, summer pass, and youth and love gone. The monotony of every day, 
and slowly within hours in the harem life is ruled by laziness, rare flashes of pleasure. But probably their life wasn't as dull as we imagine. They were under protection at least, they were well dressed and they were surrounded by beauty. What do you think about it? When Catherine the Great arrived to Crimea, she was met by a significant group of Tatar horsemen, richly dressed and armed to the teeth. She was accompanied by a French minister, Louis Philippe Segur, and he witnessed. They went out to meet the Empress to accompany her. Catherine, with thoughts always sublime and bold, wished that during her stay in Crimea, she was guarded by Tatars who scorned the female sex. They are enemies of Christians and recently only conquered by her power. This unexpected experience of trustfulness was a success like any brave feat. Tatars appreciated her trust. They paid back. They served her with love and loyalty. The quality of current restorations are still being discussed. Somebody say that the uniqueness of this place can be lost, that it must remain like it is now. But others claim that it's not really so so bad. And for example, tiles that uh, are here that you can see, they were changed already in the middle of the 20th century. Well, we will see in a few years. Thank you for watching this video to the end, even with my bad English. Uh, please subscribe and write your comments if you have anything to say. And wait for other videos. Come with us!